All right, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be looking at the new Popper Legal cards brought to us by Masters25. Master sets are always exciting for Popper players because they often contain incredibly powerful cards that were previously uncommon or even rare in previous sets, but get downshifted into common for Masters release. So we get some pretty powerful cards a lot of times. And note that we are not going to be looking at every single common card in the set, but only at the new downshifted commons. So let's take a look at the spicy new additions to the popper format. I want to start with black because it has one of the more interesting additions out of all the colors. That's because black gets ruthless ripper and relentless rats. All right, so let's look at relentless rats. Uh, it's, it's probably the craziest addition to popper this time around. This is a classic among jank players just because it has a really unique ability in that you can play any number of them in your deck and then they get plus one plus one for each relentless rats you have in play. I mean, that's actually kind of crazy for popper because there are no board sweepers. I mean, sure we have, you know, shrivel and electricery, but these have two toughness to start with and they only get bigger from there. So we don't have a lot of board sweepers for these. There's no wrath of God, no damnation, nothing like that. It actually seems a little crazy. I you know I'm going to be picking up for echoing truths, you know, just in case, just in case, you know, get those things ready. You might need them. Ruthless Ripper is a little less exciting, but it's possibly playable, kind of. You can morph it up by revealing a black creature to surprise block an attacking creature and make your opponent lose to life as well. So I guess it's kind of comparable to kind of a, a less good death's verdict, which is in turn a less good chain energy deck. So, you know, I guess it's also kind of comparable to like a winged codal, but I don't know. It's There's more reliable ways to kill a creature, so I'm not super impressed by that one. Next up, we'll take a look at white. White gets Loyal Sentry, Savannah Lions, Geist of the Moors, and Fencing Ace. A lot of people seem really excited by Loyal Sentry. I've seen a lot of like social media buzz about it, but I don't know. It's basically a worse Typhoid Rats or Farragus Chosen. Uh, you know, it, I guess it's not strictly worse because it doesn't have to deal damage. It just has to block. But, you know, Typhoid Rats and Farragus Chosen, not really playable, so... Loyal Sentry, I, I get it, it's a classic, but I, I don't know if it's really all that exciting for me. Maybe I'm wrong. Savannah Lions is a classic. Uh, man, this was an amazing creature in the early days of Magic. But, you know, in, in modern day Magic and Popper, I mean, we've already had this in the form of Elite Vanguard. So, I don't know. Seems kind of meh by today's standards. Uh, Geist of the Moor is pretty basic. The only thing it has going for it is it has one of the best power to mana cost ratios for flying creatures in popper that's to say it's a three mana three power flyer so that's more power than you normally get at the popper level usually if you're going to get three power it's going to come with a drawback so the best power to mana cost ratio but the one toughness means it's going to die to those pesky fairies and whatnot so it doesn't seem too exciting and then finally we get the card that i'm most excited about at least in white and that's fencing ace you know, it's kind of janky and it's not that great. So don't take this the wrong way. You know, it's, it's not super playable. But, you know, it's the second creature and popper with double strike. The other being Skyhunter Skirmisher. And I guess Spring Jack Knight as well, though it's unreliable. But anyway, it seems fun to suit up with auras and equipment and whatnot. But I guess then it would be pretty much like a less efficient and more vulnerable version of Boogles. So, eh. But, you know, the, the double strike on a two-mana creature and popper... You know, who knows, maybe that's something that's worthwhile. Anyway, I don't know if White got much out of this, but they did get basically a heroic deck with Iconic Masters. At least Iconic Masters made the heroic deck really, really good, so, eh, you know, fair's fair, I guess. Next up, we'll take a super quick look at Green, because Green only gets one new card. That is Anok Survivalist, which is... Mm, eh, you know, it's it's not that great. It's a 2 mana 2-1 two that can be mega morphed to destroy an artifact or enchantment. I mean, don't get me wrong, I started playing Magic back when Onslaught introduced Morph, but it's just slow. It's really slow. It seems like there are more efficient ways to destroy artifacts and enchantments, so 
I don't know. I don't really like it that much personally. But next up, we have Blue. And Blue gets some interesting things, or at least one interesting thing, in the form of Court Hussar, as well as Dragon's Eye Savants and Borrowing 100,000 Arrows, which is uh, an interesting title. But Court Hussar is spicy. This is really, really good. This was heavily played in its respective standard environment because it's quite powerful in white and blue decks. I mean, it's comparable to Seagate Oracle. You know, it's basically a Seagate Oracle with a Vigilance. And also, you can look at the top three cards instead of two. Um, obviously, it does need to be played in a blue-white deck to be utilized effectively. But being able to pick a card out of your top three cards and also have a 1-3 with Vigilance for 3 mana is actually pretty sweet for blue-white control. So, you know, if, if you're a blue fan, if you play Seagate Oracle or if you've played against Seagate Oracle and you think that's a good card in blue-white, man, Court Hussar, pretty fantastic. The other two cards are a little less exciting, but borrowing 100,000 arrows definitely wins for having the strangest name. It's from Portal 3 Kingdoms, and if you've never looked through that set, well, you should. It's kind of interesting. But anyway, it actually has a lot of potential, allowing you to draw tons of cards if your opponent has a lot of tapped creatures. I mean, this is absolutely explosive in some games, but it can also be a bit of a dud in others. But I think it has a lot of potential as a sideboard card, uh, particularly against elves. I mean, elves tap so many creatures that this could allow you to dig for a board sweeper. So yeah, against elves, this could be pretty devastating just to draw into shrivels and, you know, electricaries and whatnot. So definitely potential as a sideboard card for sure. And maybe a one of main board sometimes, but you do run the risk of it being a dead card. But man, against elves, kind of crazy. The final card is Dragon's Eye Savants. It's, uh, you know, a 0-6 with morph that allows you to look at your opponent's hand. I mean, I guess it gets in the way of Gurmag Anglers. I mean, sure, we'll go with that. Good job, Dragon's Eye Savants, keeping us safe from Gurmag Anglers. Yep, that's, that's, that's all you do, basically. All right, well, on to Red. And Red has the most additions this time around. Red players will be getting Jackal Pup, Crimson Mage, Hordling Burst, Frenzied Goblin, Cinderstorm, Balduvian Horde, Skeleton Eyes, and Pillage. Yeah, quite a bit here. So, uh, let's get into this. This is, uh, this is gonna be a bit of a longer one here, but first off, Hordling Outburst is pretty amazing. Um, if you watched me play Soul Tremors, it would be perfect in that deck. Any kind of, like, red, white, Soul Sisters, tokens type of thing. Hordling Outburst is pretty crazy, because you get three Enter the Battlefield triggers off of a single three mana card. I would definitely be playing bonus games with Soul Tremors with this because it seems pretty fantastic. Balduvian Horde is also kind of interesting. This was played a bit when it was in Standard. Um, I actually bought a pre-constructed deck that had this in it and I played it myself. Um, and you know, it's a four mana five five, so that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, but nowadays though, I, I mean, wouldn't you rather just play Gurmag Angler, for example? And, you know, not discard a card. I mean, right now as I'm recording this, I'm kind of playing around in Popper with a green-black deck that uses Imperiosaur. So, yeah, I'd rather play that and not discard a card. But, you know, it's okay, I guess. 4 mana 5-5 five five is not horrible, but it does have a pretty hefty drawback. That's more significant than some of the other 5-5s five fives in Popper. So, I don't know if it's going to be seeing too much play. But Pillage, on the other hand, wow, now I'm feeling all nostalgic. Uh, Pillage can destroy an artifact or a land for 3 mana, and neither of those is very impressive. You know, it's a stone rain or an expensive artifact removal spell at 3 mana, which is kind of expensive. But versatility is always nice, and it's one more card that adds to the viability of a land destruction deck. Maybe it's a sideboard thing. I, I think that's probably the most potential it has as sideboard because it hates against both Affinity and Tron, so that's pretty fantastic. And then next up, we have Jackal Pup, which is also a great classic card. This was a premier T2 
tier one aggro creature back in the day. Nowadays though, it's been outpaced, you know, but there is a mono red aggro deck and popper that's just on the verge of being really good. It's just never quite there and who knows, maybe Jackal Pup is the thing it needs to finally push it into being the tier one deck. I don't know for sure, but there it is. And on the topic of red aggro, we also get Crimson Mage and Frenzied Goblin. Both of these are okay, but not great. Crimson Mage allows your creatures to attack with haste once you start gassing out. And Frenzied Goblin can make creatures unable to block. So, you know, both of these help push through that last bit of damage, but at the cost of not being super aggressive. So, you know, it's kind of so-so. Not super crazy about either of these. Now, Cinder Storm seems unplayable until you remember that Tron is a thing in Popper. Um, yeah, so Tron can definitely cast this with ease. Uh, the problem is, would you play it over Ruling Thunder? You know, I'm not a Tron player, but the latter still seems better. I just don't think there's going to be a place for that one. And then we have Skeletonize, which deals 3 damage to a creature, and then pops out a Skeleton Token for yourself. Um, actually seems really cool, except for the part where it costs 5 mana. It's just too expensive. I mean, maybe it's worth trying as a 1 of in a Rakdos control deck. So, you know, if you top deck it in the late game, the 5 mana is less prohibitive. I, you know, I don't know. The art's cool though. The art and the token art. Very cool. Totally my thing. Anyway, we have one more card, guys. One more card to look at because there is one new popper illegal artifact. Are you guys ready for this? Are you guys ready? It's, it's, it's a symbolic worker. I know. Yeah. Ha ha. Very funny wizards. Good job. You trolled us. <sighs> Do we even need to talk about it? I mean, I, I guess if it was a lord, maybe it'd be okay with, I don't know, self-assemblers maybe. Maybe a self-assembler Tron deck with assembly worker lords. That would be cool. Kind of. Maybe. Probably not. But no, it has to tap itself to give a single assembly worker plus one plus one. Plus it costs three mana for a 2-2, two, two, so nope. Anyway, that's it guys. That's the entire list. Even though we didn't get a ton of new cards, there are actually some spicy new additions in my opinion. I think my picks for the best cards are... Relentless Rats, Court Hussar, and Hordling Burst, as well as Borrowing 100,000 Arrows and Pillage for Sideboards. And there might be some other stuff that's, you know, kind of fun to play around with, but those seem to be the most impactful. But uh, what do you guys think? Uh, did I undervalue anything? Is one of these cards more exciting for certain types of players that I just overlooked? Um, you know, feel free to tell me. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this interesting, and I will see you in the next one.